Every time your mother-in-law is around, she uses harsh language with them. She tells your three-year-old, you're mean. She tells your 22-month-old, you're fat. You're trying to keep calm, but you're pregnant with your third and feeling fiercely protective of your kids. That's exactly where one of our listeners found herself. She'd reached her limit. She was ready to set a very firm boundary and protect her kids from these negative comments. She'd even walked away once. She was like, if I don't remove myself, I am gonna go off on her and I don't wanna do that. But instead of setting a strict boundary or setting off a power struggle between the two, this listener tried a different approach. One day, her three-year-old was playing with her grandma, AKA the mother-in-law. She got a little too excited and whoop, hit her. And the grandma was like, you're mean. And instantly you could see this three-year-old just get crushed. She was so sad. So those listeners saw this as like, the perfect opportunity to address it in the moment. She stepped in, reassured her daughter, like, no, sweetie, you're not mean, but when you get really excited, rather than hitting grandma, because that hurts grandma, why don't you try giving her a hug instead? So three-year-old's like, okay, said sorry, gave her grandma a hug, ran off to play. Then, in the moment of calm, the listener just went beside her mother-in-law and said, you know, it really hurts her when you call her mean. Lately, she's actually been asking us Am I a mean kid, mommy? And it's breaking my heart. Like we're trying to be so careful with the words that we use at home to teach her to be gentle and kind. Could you really help us like when you're around her do that as well? And here's where things took a beautiful turn. Her mother-in-law opened up. She said, you know what? When I was a kid, my mom used horrible names. She called me horrible names. She said really mean things. And it stuck with me my whole life. Suddenly, this conversation wasn't about grandma correcting her behavior. It turned into a moment of connecting and understanding. The mother-in-law realized, yeah, you're right. Words are really powerful, especially for a young child. And she was happy to help. It was a moment that not only solved an issue, but it really brought the two closer together. Now, this is a very powerful example that sometimes we don't need this firm boundary to bridge the gap. Sometimes it's just about seeing another human across the table or sitting on the couch beside you with their own hurts and pains and history and experiences. And that could change everything. Now, if you're getting anything out of this, make sure you do all the things like subscribe and leave me a little note in the comments. Recently, another listener wrote in and she asked, how do I know it's really a boundary I need and I'm not just being selfish. Now this is honestly one of the best questions. And for me, I like to go through like a mini checklist. First, I ask myself, am I taking something like really personal and it's not really about me? Let's say my mother-in-law critiqued or like, made comments, let's not say critique. Let's say my mother-in-law made comments all the time about my parenting. Now, stepping back, I would ask myself, okay, <laughs> is she critiquing me or is she trying to connect with me? Is she trying to say, man, things have changed since I was a young mom? Like, which is it? Because honestly, I remember being a young mom and if anyone, I mean, even if my own mom would say anything, I was horribly offended right away. I took everything personal and it could just be a statement like, oh, that's so different. Or, oh, I would have never thought to do it that way. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm doing it wrong. Because I honestly think as young parents, we're so scared of messing up. And there's, I know there's a lot of books, but there really isn't a manual. Like we're just doing the very best we can. So to have someone over your shoulder that's already, you know, been through it and probably knows that, well, no, for sure they know a heck of a lot more than us because they've already done it. They've experienced it over our shoulder chirping. It's so easy to take it personal and, and feel attacked. Using that example, I would step back, ask myself, am I taking it personal and it's not? She's just trying to connect with me. But let's say, no, this is actually awful. Like, I think she's critiquing me. I need to set a boundary. The next step I do in my little checklist or my process is I filter it through just my personal definition of what a boundary is. And I know you've heard me say this before and I'll just rattle it off, but I'll actually break it down a little bit like what it actually means to me. So a boundary to me needs to keep me safe, balanced, and it strengthens my relationships. And it doesn't, they don't all do it all the time on all these categories, but it, it hits the mark on some of these crit like criteria. So let's break that down because I do usually say it pretty fast. When I say a boundary keeps me safe, I'm talking psychologically, emotionally, and physically. When I say a boundary keeps me balanced, it means 
I have boundaries literally set in place to support a life that aligns with my values. A top value of mine is quality time with my family. I feel like I'm here to make memories with my family besides just being a good person. And so I have boundaries set in place to make sure outside things don't pull me away from that value. So that supports my values. So it um, a boundary keeps me balanced. And the other one is a boundary strengthens my relationship. And that was like one of the key things for me when I realized, oh my gosh, when I didn't have boundaries, I resented the crap out of people because they were just taking from me all the time because I allowed it. And that was allowing resentment to breed, bleed in, breed in. Well, it kind of breeds because it just like gets worse and worse. But it was breeding, <laughs> bleeding into our relationship and breaking it down. So again, I run it through my personal definition. Does it keep me safe? Will it keep me more balanced? And will it strengthen my relationships? Let's say it passes, then I know, yeah, this is worth setting a boundary for. But a boundary, as you know, that's just the first step. Minding it on the back end, that's just as important. Like let's say you tell somebody and they decide, I don't wanna respect it. It's on you to hold the line and change your behavior. It's not on them. This mom, she decided, okay, I am not comfortable with grandma telling my kid they're mean, they're fat, and to shut up. If her mother-in-law hadn't been receptive, that mom could have said, okay, Gloria, I understand this is a lot to ask, but it's really important for us that our kids are spoken to with kindness. So if this keeps happening, we're gonna have to end our visits earlier, or I'm not even gonna be able to leave them with you unsupervised. That is what I mean when I say minding your boundaries. So you said it, that's one part, but then you also have to mind it. In this case though, the mom took a completely different approach. She chose to have a conversation with compassion and she framed it in a way that we're gonna work as a team. Like we're trying to teach her to play gently and it would be so helpful if you were on board. And it shifted the tone entirely, so much so that it gave the mother-in-law the feeling like, oh my gosh, I feel seen, heard and understood. I feel comfortable enough opening up to you about my own pain, about my own struggle, about my own trauma in my childhood. She opened up to her daughter-in-law, which led to them strengthening their relationship because now they understand each other better. What a powerful, powerful story that shows us, yes. In fact, we all know boundaries are powerful tools, but they're not always the only solution. Sometimes just approaching someone with empathy and trying to understand like where they're coming from can create the change you desire. Like we're all just humans. We're all just trying to do our best. And sometimes just remembering that, like it just helps us find common ground faster. This listener's approach with her mother-in-law was absolutely beautiful. And again, it allowed her mother-in-law to feel comfortable to like bond with her. And now this simple, compassionate conversation probably broke a cycle that was coming down through generations and it could have been or became this ongoing power struggle, but instead it just turned into a bridge of healing. So as you go through your situations with friends and family, first pause and ask yourself, do I need a boundary or is there just room for a shift in perspective? You might be surprised at how powerful just a small moment of grace can really be. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. I hope this story has fired you up and inspired you as much as it inspired me. If you found this helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more episodes like this. My name is Jess. I'm your boundary enthusiast. And until next time, friend, make sure you keep minding your boundaries.